No. Okay. All right. Do that. Make sure this thing here. All right. There. There. Put that on my end. Okay. All right, everybody. So, uh, before we begin our meeting today, obviously, if anyone who is our first time member or a candidate or member, please get the QR codes. We'll have these up at the end of the presentation today. Um, but today should be, you know, an informational obsession. Um, we're basically talking about today DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's a hot topic um, around, you know, in accounting and finance. And we figured, you know, why don't we teach you guys, you know, what it is and, you know, how to apply that into maybe even internships or maybe full time jobs. So uh, we're going to talk about our agenda today. We'll have objectives. We'll understand what is DEI, why does it even matter. Now, and also, how does it apply to us as accounting and finance majors? Um, the business case of it, the pitfall lacks of DEI. We'll also have some real world impact. So we'll give you guys some examples of how um, companies today are actually utilizing DEI. Um, we'll also go over common misconceptions of DEI, the intersectionality of DEI, how to measure it, overcoming those challenges, actionable steps. So within individuals and organizations, the do's and don'ts of DEI. Um, we'll also show you guys an example of actually a three minute video actually of how a company actually is utilizing DEI um, in action. And then we'll also talk about continual growth and improvement followed by closing thoughts. And then we'll have a Q and A session at the end if anyone's any questions. Um, and again, if anyone's any other questions, you guys can interrupt us anytime we want. We want. Um, but today's presenters, the e-board. So myself, Gloria, oh, hello, Professor Sampath. Um, just came in the room, um, Gloria, VP, Joe Auden, our secretary, and Ricky Lewis, our treasurer. So let us get started. So I want to start off with a quote here, and this is by Verna Myers, um, that diversity is being, is being invited to the party. Inclusion is being asked to the dance. So, you know, obviously keep this quote in mind as we continue our journey into DEI and to our discussion today. Um, so obviously the objectives, we want to understand the definitions and the importance of DEI recognize the benefits for the individuals, us as um, accounting majors and finance majors, organizations and societies, and also learn actionable steps for implementation. Um, so understanding DEI. So let's, you know, begin, let's uh, step, define some terms here. So diversity is all about recognizing and embracing our differences. Equity is ensuring fair fairness in processes, recognizing that everyone might need difficult different things to get the same outcome. And inclusion is the act of making sure everyone feels a, feels a sense of belonging. Together, these concepts shape our understanding of an inclusive environment. Now, why does it matter? Um, the reason why it matters is as we transition, it's the understanding of the profound impact of DEI is essential to grasp the overarching significance in today's world. So obviously diversity is a catalyst for innovation. Multiple studies have shown that diverse teams often come up with more creative and effective solutions. This isn't just about different differentiating opinions. It's all also about unique life experiences, molding distinct viewpoints. And better decision making is another key benefit of it. So when a diverse group deliberates on a challenge, their combined perspectives lead to more holistic and well thought out conclusions. And from a purely business centric perspective, enhanced business performance is a tangible outcome of DEI. Diverse companies are 35% more likely to outperform their less diverse counterparts. This isn't a coincidence, but a testament to the power of various perspectives. And obviously in our globalized era, our customer base is incredibly diverse. A company that mirrors this diversity is better positioned to understand and cater to its global clientele. And lastly, it is about social responsibility. As leaders, entrepreneurs, or simply as members of society, we have a duty to create environments where every individual feels seen, value, and heard. Our workplaces should be a reflection of the society we have, we aspire to have. And remember, the goal of this is to emphasize the multifaceted benefits of DEI, making a compelling argument, not just from a moral standpoint, but also from a business standpoint as well. So how does this apply to us as accounting and finance majors? Well, obviously, first, it does reflect on a diverse client base. So professionals in accounting and finance often serve a diverse range of clients. Understanding DEI helps in appreciating different perspectives and cultural backgrounds, leading to better client relationships and more effective communication. There's also the global business environment. So the finance and accounting sectors are increasingly globalized. 
professionals in these fields need to navigate and respect a multitude of cultural norms and practices. Awareness and understanding of DEI principles can facilitate smoother interactions in a global business context and workplace diversity. So, you know, obviously us, you know, accounting and finance majors are most likely going to work in diverse environments. Um, knowledge of DEI can contribute to creating a more inclusive and respectful workplace, which is beneficial for team dynamics, employee satisfaction, and retention. And there's always that ethical decision making when you go into doing everything, you know, in your career. DEI awareness ties closely to that in business. Understanding and respecting diversity can help future accountants and finance professionals make ethical decisions that can consider the impact on various groups and lead to more equitable outcomes. And then obviously our corporate social responsibility, so CSR, which companies are increasingly held accountable for their role in social issues. And understanding DEI is essential for professionals involved in CSR reporting initiatives. And then obviously, lastly, um, personal growth and career advancement. So, you know, on a personal level, understanding and valuing DEI can contribute to one's own moral and ethical development, making one a more empathetic and an effective professional. It's also a skill set that increasingly value and also sought after in the job market today. Oh, sorry that. Uh, in terms of the business case for DEI, it's important to know about the bolster financial performance, also better decision making, improved employee engagement. That's all that. DI leads to, and also it attracts a lot of top talent. In terms of the pitfalls of lack of DI, it leads to reduce employee morale, also miss business opportunities, and a lot of reputation damage, as well as a limited perspective. Talking about the real world impact, this is Joe, Joe I believe, right? No, no, it's still you. Assume me, okay. In terms of the real world impact, it has a lot of positive examples. For example, Microsoft, how diversity led to a lot of breakthrough with their products. Also Accenture is an example of how an inclusive culture attracted a lot of top talent and also the negative examples. For example, Uber had a lot of negative outcomes from the lack of DEI as well as H&M. Talking about the public relations issues that were steaming from the insensitivity. Talking about the common misconceptions, some of them are diversity just about race and gender. Equity means giving everyone the same thing. Inclusion means we lower our standards and DI encourages hiring unqualified candidates of color. DI benefits only certain groups. So these are all of the misconceptions are really often seen. Talking about and intersectionality. Uh, intersectionality is a term that recognizes our multiple identities and how they interact. Think about how the experience of an African-American woman might differ from that of a white man or a white woman or any type of man. Uh, this concept helps us understand the layered experiences of individuals enriching our DEI approach. Measuring DEI. Uh, attrition analysis involves examining both voluntary and involuntary departures, especially concerning underrepresented groups to identify potential discriminatory practices or adverse impact. Organizations should compare their attrition rates with national averages and conduct exit interviews to understand the reasons behind employee departures, including potential bias or inclusivity issues. Attrition being a lagging indicator can signal systemic bias within an organization. Performance, uh, many companies use subjective and annual performance reviews, which can inadvertently lead to biased outcomes. It's important to ensure that performance ratings are equitably distributed across all groups. Disproportionate at high or low ratings for specific groups could indicate bias. Performance reviews, a leading indicator of promotion, should ideally focus on competencies and demonstrated results rather than solely on subjective ratings. Uh, for promotions, uh, for promotion, promote, uh, promotion rates need to be balanced across different demographic groups at all levels within an organization. A thorough analysis can reveal biases such as favoritism towards majority groups at higher levels or in specific job functions. 
transparency and promotion data as practiced by companies like Walmart and Consolidated Edison is key to maintaining fairness and accountability and promotion practices. Uh, leadership pipeline. The diversity of an organization's future leaders program is crucial as it predetermines the diversity of future senior leadership. The selection process influenced by performance and promotion biases should align with the organization's diversity goals, ensuring the leadership pipeline mirrors workforce representation and future diversity object objectives. Employment pipeline. To assess hiring effectiveness, or organizations should analyze their entire hiring pipeline. From applications to interviews, offers, and acceptance rates, ensuring fairness across all demographic groups. Low acceptance rates for specific groups can indicate issues with company culture suggesting the need for a more inclusive environment. Pay equity. Pay equity ensures equal pay for equal work regardless of identity differing from the broader societal issue of pay gaps. Organizations should regularly conduct pay equality analysis and be transparent about the findings and actions taken to address any discrepancies, fostering credibility and fairness in compensation and inclusion. Inclusion involves ensuring that every employee's experience is valued. Organizations are increasingly measuring the inclusivity of their environments using advanced data, analytics, and behavior-based algorithms. Tools like Qualtrics, Culture AMP or specialized DEI platforms help assess various inclusion aspects, including manager relationship, belonging, and access to network, thereby enhancing overall workplace equity and inclusivity. Overcoming DEI challenges. So faced with these challenges, how do we make a positive shift? Firstly, by addressing the unconscious biases we all carry. These biases often though often unintentional, can, significant, can, can significantly skew our judgments. Training is crucial. Regular DEI sessions can enlighten and educate employees, making them more aware and inclusive in their daily interactions. Diverse hiring isn't just about numbers. It's about enriching our talent pool, bringing varied perspectives to the table, coupled with celebrating multicultural events and ensuring leadership is on board, organizations can create a sustainable DEI culture. So now we're going to transition to some actionable, actionable steps um, that both individuals as well as organizations can take to enhance their diversity, inclusion, and equity. Um, starting at the individual level, we can all educate ourselves, right? We can read, attend workshops, join conversations. Um, partnered with that is we can listen actively to diverse voices and perspectives, right? So always continue to challenge your own biases and more importantly, stand as an ally advocate, advocating for um, the marginalized. From an organizational standpoint, um, fostering DEI starts with education. So multiple trainings can tackle unconscious biases by establishing transparent policies and nurturing a mentorship culture, um, which can ensure everyone feels valued. And uh, lastly, let's just always keep ourselves accountable by revisiting and assessing our DEI goals regularly. Um, so I'm not going to obviously read down these entire lists. Um, a lot of things here are self-explanatory, right? Some do's of DEI always continue to educate yourself said that in the last slide, but that's something that is very important. Um, realize that mistakes will happen and they can happen. Um, but it's not how we make those mistakes. It's how we can recover from those. Um, and then just some general don'ts, right? Focus, don't ever focus just on diversity. Um, the E's and the I's are also equally as important. Um, and never write policies to change employee behavior. Always educate yourself. Again, educate, educate, educate. Very important. And the rest of those are also very self-explanatory. So now I believe we're going to go into a little short video, um, and then we'll continue on. Yes, we will. Yes. I'll make sure everyone's able to hear this. Uh, if you guys cannot hear it, then let me. Right, yeah, let we me... cannot hear that. Right, let me. I know. Let me. Oh, you know why? I think you need to share sound too. Yeah, that's that's what I was. Uh, that's what I was doing. So, <laughs> all right, now we're gonna hear. So now we can go buy our ice cream. All right, make ways. Ben & Jerry's, as you know, has a three-part mission statement, product, social, and economic. And especially the uh, social mission part of it is probably why I've stayed with the company as long as I have. I like that. Very good. Our 
our approach to social mission is to actually work our way from inside the pint out. So where we want to start is with the dairy. And so we made a stand on making sure that we support uh, the family farmers from which we sourced our dairy so that they can have more sustainable, profitable family farms. And we work our way through the pint to the ingredients like sugar, cocoa, banana, uh, coffee, uh, vanilla. Those five core ingredients are all fair trade certified. As we uh, get all the way to the packaging, how can this packaging be environmentally sustainable? So we get Forest Stewardship Council certified paperboard. As we prosper, they prosper. We want to use our business and our business model of linked prosperity to show that the communities where we're sourcing our ingredients from, where we're uh, selling our products and where we manufacture our products are a part of the prosperity of our growing business. And Ben and Jerry's, in the spirit of transparency and really trying to be a better company, decided to issue a social report and an environmental report. Like the, the role of my team in Link Prosperity is helping bring that visual identity to life. To use this company to create positive change in the world. That's what I'm hired to do. I don't know why, it just feels like the right thing to do. There are a lot of places you could work and spend your day wondering if you've made a difference. Sometimes we succeed at that, sometimes we don't, but we're not faking it. Everyone in the world gets a positive feeling, gets happiness when they contribute, when they have a purpose, when they make a difference in their community. You know, we speak uh, to the aspiring activist inside all of us. There are little uh, kind of flowers blooming around Link Prosperity within the, within the company right now. That feels really, really good. It's an important part of our mission. And that gives us, at least in my mind, the credibility to be challenging others. And again, it's not something that we're trying to hold for ourselves, it's something that we're trying to invite the whole world to join us in. That and three free pints a day ain't bad either. <laughs>all right so i hope you guys enjoyed that short little video about ben and jerry's um so really they are a prime example of how di can be woven into the very fabric of a company's identity um you know they've not only spoken about di but they've taken active steps to implement it at every level kind of speaking back to those previous slides we had you know they've done steps at the individual as well as the organizational level to uh, differentiate themselves from other companies and employers um you know, so from the flavors they launch to the farmers they partner with, Ben and Jerry's commitment to social justice and equity is very clear, as you guys saw in that video. Um, and what's especially noteworthy is how they leverage their platform. So they're not just a company selling ice cream, as many of us may believe, but they're advocates for change. So this positions them very uniquely in the market and fosters a loyal customer base that aligns with their values. Um, and so what's the takeaway of this? Well, embracing DI authentically can transform your brand's image, market position, and the impact it has on the world. And so Ben & Jerry showcases how a company can genuinely integrate DI into its business model, product offerings, and broader societal impact, which makes it an excellent case study for this specific presentation. So yeah, if you guys thought Ben & Jerry's was just about ice cream, it's a little deeper than that. We just have this little quote here. DEI is not a destination, but a continuous journey. So as the saying goes, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Basically meaning every effort counts. Um, and as we keep learning and growing, we pave the way for a more inclusive future. Thank you, Ricky. All right. So to wrap all this up, closing thoughts on this. DEI is a journey. It's not a destination and everyone plays a role in fostering DEI and like we said it throughout this presentation, the benefits of DEI 
extend beyond the workplace to society at large. Um, so with that being said, that will be a lot of time for a Q&A session. So if anyone has any questions about DEI or anything we talked about today, you guys can ask. Anyone on Zoom, you guys can put it in the chat. If you guys don't want to, you know, unmute yourselves, I get it. Once, twice, tries. All righty then. All right, so for those who showed up late, um, I will put the QR codes up again. Um, for attendance, Ebor, you guys don't have to do it because I've already done that already, so do not worry. Um, all right, I'll leave this up for a couple, minute, couple more minutes. Um, just to go over our meetings for February, next week we'll have IMA come in. Um, I'll be here along with Mary Patterson coming to speak about IMA and the CMA exam. Um, then on the 21st, we're going to have another workshop gearing you guys up for the job and internship fair on the 29th that FU Silver will be hosting. Um, and then on the 28th, we'll have Witham come in, uh, and that'll be our schedule for February. Um, but again, if anyone's, if anyone's not any other questions, comments, concerns, um, that is it for this week's meeting. I know it was a short meeting, but, you know, we had this topic to talk about, but next week we will have a full-length meeting. So with that being said, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for all coming, and we'll see you guys next week. See ya. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Chat, send you the uh, the recording out right again. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll see you. Right, thank you. Bye, Professor. Bye. Bye. See you, Professor.